In this video, we will be going over how to build a LabVIEW executable. If you've been using LabVIEW in a laboratory environment and you've never had to, to do this, this will quickly show you how to take your existing VIs and turn them into executables. And it's really not that bad. You do have to have a, a higher level of uh, LabVIEW license to do it. You can't do it in the base edition. I think you need the professional edition or else to buy the application builder. And we're just gonna create a quick project, blank project, new, not that new. We'll just do a new VI from template. Typically for, for quick and dirty tools, a producer consumer pattern for events works really well. This is what these these look like. If you haven't used them, I suggest you do or look into them. They 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 ship with all versions of LabVIEW. And then we're going to go let's see. Let's create a folder for this. And typically you'll have one VI that you should name the main VI. So it's obvious which one is is the one that is is going to be the, the launching VI. You always have to have one VI that's the, the one that the executable runs. So we press go. It doesn't do much besides stop, but the framework is there. And then let's get out of it. Then you're going to go under build specifications. And assuming it ever comes back from La La Land. There's two ones you need to be aware of. The first is the application, and the other one's the installer. Typically, you'll build the application and then add it to an installer. We won't go over installers here. I, f I find usually they're pretty useless unless you're wanting to uh, distribute it outside a, a laboratory or a test engineering group, because the installer allows you to bundle things like the live view runtime with the executable. And that's usually always installed on top of the production test systems. Okay. Okay. You need to name the build specification name. In this case, we'll just call test executable. This is where you get to say what the file name is. In this case, we're going to call it, we'll call it the same name. And you just specify where it goes. I don't know why NI hasn't fixed this. Pretty much all other modern uh, build systems allow you to do relative paths, but they really want you to do a uh, destination directory that's a static path, which means typically what you'll do is, is off the the C drive, you'll have like the company name and then a build folder there or some someplace standard so that when multiple engineers check out the build specs, they don't have to keep changing this so that they can build it on their local machines. Then the next uh, thing you want to do is under source files is find your startup VI, which is main.vi, and you add it. And that's all you need to do for an executable. If you have limits files or if you have config files, or if you have, if you're using a plugin architecture and you've got like a test PPL that you want to include, then add it to the project and then put it into the always include and it becomes part of the build specification. Anything directly uh, referenced by main that isn't like a P, uh, build PPL will be pulled into the executable when it was deployed. And this is your destinations. For instance, you've got the executable and LabVIEW executables are kind of weird. They act in a lot of respects, like a, a PPL or, or a, a library, wherein all the VIs will end up with a path of, of the test ex executable.exe and then forward slash whatever the, the VI is. So, so main.vi, if you were to ask for its VI path, then it would, it would say it was test executable.exe slash main.vi. You need to be aware of that if you have any sort of relative pathing to your VIs, as that will trip you up. And the, the way to fix that is there's a couple of 
VI is out there. I think MGI's toolkit has one, but you need to check if you're running in the runtime engine or in the development engine. And if you're in the runtime engine, then do additional work on your path to find your relative files. If you needed to, you can rename any of the files you're deploying to something else. Usually you don't have to touch it. Any sort of icon, right now we're using the default icon, but if you have a company with specific icon, then you would change it there. Under advanced, if you want to, you can do enabling uh, debugging. Typically, if you, you're at a point where you're building executable, you don't need to attach to it. It will not allow you to debug the LabVIEW executable if you're running in the LabVIEW runtime engine. But if you're on a machine that has the LabVIEW development environment, you can attach to it and then set breakpoints if you've got an, an issue that only shows up in the built executable. And then there's certain options here. For instance, if you're building into a common build directory that you wanted to exclude the dependent packed libraries and shared libraries so they, they don't conflict. Any sort of versioning information you can, you can set here. And by default, the auto increment version on build is there. This is also important to, to keep accurate. Leave the check mark on it or uncheck it and change the, the major at some point in time if you had to roll a major revision and then check it again. Because most of the time when you're using the installers, the way it, it tells whether or not it should upgrade an, uh, an already existing installation is based on the version number. If you've got two executables that are built at different times but have the same version number, your installer won't work correctly. These ones you typically don't need to worry about. If you're worried about security, you, you can look them up in the help file, but you can sign these executables if you wanted to. Shared variables, if you got them, any sort of runtime language. If you want to, if you're uh, wanting to build to a web service, we won't get into that. That's, that's more advanced. And then this is more advanced if you're running into like a, in a CI pipeline or something, if you wanted to do a, a VI action to change some, some variables or obfuscate something before you build and then undo what you just did after you build, you could run it right here. And then if you generate preview, it'll tell you the list of files that it thinks it's going to generate. And this is useful too, because if you have an error somewhere, like if you've got a broken VI, then it will tell you, I can't generate the files because something is wrong. And then you go back and fix that. And then we press OK. And then we press Build. And then if we go ahead and explore, click the executable. And as you can see, it launches our main VI and starts it for us. So I haven't done anything with the, the window appearance. Usually you'll, you'll go to window appearance and, and do like top level dialogue or, or something. And you don't get all of the, the lab view menus either. So if we'd, uh, yeah, if we'd had the debug screen, you could look at the block diagram if we'd enabled debugging. And you'll notice if you press stop, it just hangs there because we haven't added in any logic to exit the executable. So what you're going to want to do, if you don't want your users to have to worry about that, is you go to the block diagram and we're going to check to see if it's a, uh, if we're in the runtime environment and if it is, then we're going to exit. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go into the programming application control palette. And then we want to run this after the loops end. So typically you'll, you'll need to wire something from the loop out. And once you get the application engine instance, create property. And you're going to look for kind. And what you're looking
looking for is runtime system. Do a comparison. If what we're running is a runtime system, and we'll wire that into the lab you quit. And then when we go with it, if you press stop, since we're in the development system, nothing happens. If you just wired true to this, then it would quit out of your development system while you're developing. And we don't want that. And then we build it. Run the test executable. If you press stop, it now exits cleanly. And that's how we set up a LabVIEW executable.